Hey guys, my name is Gert Hendricks. I'm a safety coach from FTS Safety. And previously we spoke about the basics of a risk assessment and we mentioned all the elements of it. Well, today we're going to make, go a little bit deeper. Now, first thing that we need to do is to understand that a method statement guides our risk assessment. A method statement is purely a document that states us how we're going to do the work. Now, I've got a, a challenge out there for all the safety officers and safety reps and whoever watched this in this video. That if you find a mistake and you can bring it under our attention in the comment section, I would firstly make sure that you get a 20% discount from anything in the consulting side. That meaning your safety files or even the software that we use in printing a safety file, namely SafeSite. Now guys, let's say that there is a house out on tender to be painted. And you are the lucky contractor, you're going to get to paint the house. Now, before you're going to just rush in painting the house, you're obviously going to sit down and do your planning. We're going to take that planning and we're going to write it down in a method statement. And the first thing that you're going to look for is your tools and equipment. You're going to obviously use your paint. And you're going to use a drip sheet to make sure that whenever you spill that you minimize it. And you're going to use a step ladder to make sure you can reach all the areas. Then you realize that it's a double story house, you might be going to need some scaffolding. And then obviously some cleaning chemicals uh, to make sure that your brushes and equipment and spools has been cleaned properly. Then you're going to sit down and write down every step of how you're going to start. Number one is you're going to need to prepare your walls for painting by sanding it. Two, you're going to place a drip sheet to minimize the environmental spills for wherever you make a small spill. Thirdly, you're going to decant your paint into painting trays on the drip sheet just to make sure you don't spill. Fourthly, you're going to store your paint in well ventilated areas and away from any ignition source as per the MSDSs. Number five, you're going to start painting your house by use of ladder. Now, if you use a ladder, you must make sure that the ladder are inspected and safe before use. You need to make sure that the ladder at all times is secure by a fellow employee holding the ladder at the bottom. Number six, if you are going to paint the house by scaffolding, you obviously need to make sure that the scaffolding is safe before you guys get on it. Always use a safety harness. Barricade below the scaffolding. Number seven, you're going to clean spills as they happen. And then when you are done, you're obviously going to clean your paint brushes, but remember, don't ever clean it on your client's site. Now guys, this is just a guideline of what a method statement needs to look like. This is then your method statement document. Now if we have a look at the content of that method statement, there's a couple of things that we need to look for. For example, painting in a house, we must make sure that the task and steps are specific to that site. Now that is the majority of the times that safety files fail. It's because it is generic and not specific to the site. In that uh, method statement, you must mention your tools and equipment and chemicals. The steps in logical order of how you're going to do the task. You must also be able to use the tools and equipment within the steps and how you're going to use it. The employee's responsibility must clearly set out within your method statement. And everything must be underlined by training and competency of how to do the task and work with the equipment and material. Once you've got everything like that in place, only then you can proceed to do the risk assessment. Within the risk assessment, there you're going to look for the hazards that has been identified, the risk attached to the hazards, the rating of how dangerous the risk is to your employee, and then obviously the controls and how to make sure you're going to do the tasks safely. Now guys, I'm going to jump now to SafeSite, the software that we use to print safety files. And we're going to show you there how to do a risk assessment. The challenge stand, if any recommendations or mistakes that we have made, bring it under our attention. And I will personally make sure you get a 20% discount on safe site for your next safety file.
Good day. Today we're going to do a risk assessment on safe site and this is on our home page you can see there's a risk assessment. We're going to go there. This is your arsenal of risk assessments that you've already built up the history. Today we're going to add a new risk assessment. Okay, so you'll see it starts then with our empty sheet, with our task and our activities, potential hazard, potential risk, uh, raw risk, controls and reduce risk. It's extremely important that you understand how to do calculate your raw risk and your reduce risk before you start. So for that I'm quickly going to zoom in. A raw risk is then the risk, the likelihood and consequences before the controls are implemented. Reduce risk, the rating once controls and preventative measures are in place. The rating of it is then likelihood versus the consequences. Your likelihood is then categorized from A to E, varies from almost certain to very unlikely. Consequences is from 1 to 5, which is superficial, to number 5, which is catastrophic. It then just, when you calculate the two, it will give you then a risk rating that starts from a low, medium, high, and very high. It's extremely important that you have risk matrix then accessible so you'll see then here in the bottom is the risk matrix and how they can get to a low risk to a catastrophic risk good so let's start the first we're going to add the task which is painting of house the category then will be painting the date is then today the revision will then be in a year's time Version number one, the risk assessment will be myself. And now we can start. Please keep in mind that the activities must correspond with your method statement. So I'm going to start with the method statement number one and work the hazards, risk, rating, controls and reduced risk. The first one then that we have, preparing wall by sanding, potential hazard, Dust, potential risk, health issues, the likelihood is then uh, C, two consequences, then B, it's a high risk. Preventative measures is PPE, all employees to wear dust mask. If they wear the dust mask, what is the reduced risk? A low risk. Now guys, I'm going to go through this step by step for each one of those tasks because a lot of guys out here still needs to understand how the activities, the hazards and the potential risk fall into place. So, please bear with me, let's quickly go to number two, placing of drip sheets, potential hazard is then a slip, trip and fall, potential risk is then environmental spills and health issues, likelihood, high risk, the controls then would be all employees to wear safety shoes, clean site before placing of drip sheets. If we do that, the likelihood then would be low risk. Number three is then decanting of paint, hazardous chemicals, risk is environmental spills and health issues. And it's a high risk. Controls, decanting of paint to only to be done on drip sheet. All employees to read and understand the MSDSs of chemicals in use. Once we've done that, the control, the risk will drop to a medium risk. Number four, storing of paint. Hazard is hazardous chemicals. A risk would then be environmental spills and health issues. The grading, a high risk. The controls to be implemented. Chemicals to be stored in appropriate area as agreed upon by supervisor. All spills to be cleaned as they happen. All employees to read and understand the MSDSs for the safe use of chemicals. All chemicals to be stored in spill tray. Once we have done that, the risk will drop to a low risk. But storing of chemicals can also be flammable. So fire could be a hazard. The risk can then be burns, property damage and even death. It will still be a high risk. The controls for fire, 
store area not to have any ignition source extinguishers to be accessible at store area once we've got that in place it's a low risk can you guys see how I have separated storing of paint into hazardous chemicals is the hazard as well as fire could be a hazard and the controls which is meant for each one of those next step will then be painting of house by use of ladder the hazard then will be falling from heights risk will then be bodily injury and possible death as you can see there is a very high risk the controls will then be ensure that the ladder is inspected and safe before use ladder must at all times be secure by fellow employees holding the ladder at the bottom all employees to be trained in safe working at heights it will go down to a medium risk number six painting house by use of scaffolding the hazard remains falling from heights risk is then bodily injury and possible death and as you can see it's a very high risk controls then what is implemented is all employees to be medically fit as per construction regulation all employees working on scaffolding must use safety harnesses and hard hat scaffolding must be erected by competent and appointed scaffold erector scaffolding must be inspected by competent and appointed scaffold inspector now as you can see the block is too small we jumped over to the next one which reads all employees must be trained CETA accredited working and arts training scaffolding must be barricaded below all work to be done under supervision of appointed site supervisor if we have done that the risk will drop to a high risk last one is cleaning hazard the slip trip and fall bodily injury as you can see it could be a high risk controls then will be clean spills as they happen and no paint brushes or rollers to be cleaned on client site if you do that it will be a low risk now guys this is where I'm going to stop please note that this is just an overview of how to do a risk assessment there is so many more controls that can be placed in in the risk assessment and that was all depending on you and your competency as well as your safety officer and your client safety agent important is that the dates must be on your risk assessment your activities then must neatly be stipulated one two three your hazards your risk your grading and your controls must be in place it's also very important that your risk assessment must be signed off by the relevant management like your risk assessor your project manager your construction manager and supervisor and then also that the matrix must be present and very important and lastly it must be communicated to all of your employees great now your risk assessment is part of your arsenal of risk assessments that you can use in future and edit as you feel fit now you've selected that this is one of the risk assessments for this project you can view it and see all the risk assessments that you have selected and done for this specific project